Hey everyone, Tio here. Welcome to the artist comparison review of the OnePlus Pad with OnePlus Stylo versus the iPad Pro 11 inch with Apple Pencil 2. Now a fairer comparison would be to compare this tablet which is 479 US dollars with the iPad 10 which is 449 US dollars but I don't have the iPad 10 which is why I'm using the iPad Pro 11 inch. Alright, I'm just going to give you the bottom line up front. In terms of drawing performance, the OnePlus Stylo is as sensitive compared to the Apple Pencil and the drawing performance is actually comparable. There's only one thing the Apple Pencil, or actually two things the Apple Pencil can do that the OnePlus Stylo cannot. With Apple Pencil 2, you can get line transition from thin to thick with tilt while drawing by varying the angle of the Apple Pencil. With the OnePlus Stylo, you cannot vary the line width using tilt while you are drawing. Tilt works, it's just that when you change the angle of the Apple Pencil, you're not going to be able to vary the line width. So this is probably some software related issue that OnePlus can fix with a software update. The other difference between the pens is with the Apple Pencil 2, you can tap on the side to use the shortcut to switch between tools. And this shortcut is compatible with many drawing apps and this shortcut may be customizable. There is the tapping shortcut as well on the OnePlus Stylo. However, at the time of making this video, this shortcut is only compatible with the default note-taking app on the OnePlus Pad. If you are looking for a tablet just for drawing purposes, both tablets offer fantastic drawing performance. Now, if you are looking to do a bit more, in addition to just drawing, iPad and iPad OS is going to be able to give you more features because iPad OS has been out for several years, so with each OS release, they pack more features and right now Oxygen OS on this OnePlus Pad is I would say in its infancy stage so there are many missing features that an artist would need that are not available on this tablet. There are two backup options provided by OnePlus Pad and both options do not back up the tablet completely. Now with the iPad, Apple will use iCloud to back up everything. So in the event that the iPad is damaged, lost or stolen, you can get a new iPad, sign to your Apple ID and all the apps including all the artworks in the apps and the layout for the apps and the settings for the apps, all those things will be restored. But with the OnePlus Pad, if you lose this tablet or if this is stolen or damaged there is no way for you to get your artworks back with a backup because those artworks that are saved within the drawing apps are not backed up unless you are using a drawing app where you can save the artworks to the cloud storage for example if you use Medibank Paint or Clip Studio Paint where you can save your art to cloud storage then you don't have to worry about backing up your artworks because they are saved online. And also this tablet comes with only 128 gigs of storage without any micro SD card slot. So storage is limited and you may run out of storage in the future if you are a professional artist or if you are someone who likes to draw a lot. iPad 10 comes with 64 gigs of storage and that is 449 US dollars. If you want to increase the storage to 256 gigs, that is an additional $150. So this is $599 versus $479. Apple is still selling their old iPad 9, which is the one with the physical home button. And that is $329 for the model with 64 gigs of storage, which is very limited for creating art because you have to remember iPad OS and the system files and the apps that you install all take up storage. So if you increase that storage capacity to 256 gigabytes, uh, that's $479, which is the same price as the OnePlus Pad, but you get two times more storage. 
capacity. The safer option is probably to go with the iPad, even though the drawing performance of these two pens is kind of similar because iPad OS has more features. If your budget is really small, then you can only go with the iPad 9, the one with the physical home button, but increase the storage to 256 gigs. All right, so that's the bottom line. And now let's take a look and compare the hardware, the tablet. So the OnePlus Pad comes with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, but there is no micro SD card slot. The iPad 10, which this tablet is not, comes with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, which is very limiting. And the iPad does not have micro SD card slots as well. So this is an IPS LCD. The size is 11.61 inch. This is 11 inch. And the OnePlus Pad is slightly larger compared to the iPad Pro or the iPad Air or the iPad 10. The visual quality of these two displays is kind of similar. Both are big and comfortable enough for drawing. The colors look great out of the box. They have good brightness and the visuals are sharp with no noticeable pixelation. Both displays just look great. The aspect ratio on the OnePlus Pad is 7 by 5 and on the iPad it's kind of similar. Both tablets are compact, thin and lightweight for tablets their sizes. For the physical design, the OnePlus Pad is more comfortable to hold because it has curved edges on all four sides. So if you're using the tablet without a case, you can hold the tablet like this and it's very comfortable in hand. This is a sketch that I drew on location at this market in South Korea and I was standing and sketching holding the iPad Pro like this. So the sharper edges here are not as comfortable compared to the OnePlus Pad. I mean, this is not uncomfortable. It's just the OnePlus Pad is more comfortable because of the curved edges. If you have a case on both tablets, then I would say the tablets would be much heavier and more uncomfortable to hold like this for drawing. So you will probably have to set the tablet down on a table or on any surface if you are drawing with a case on the tablet. You may notice the color temperature on this iPad display is warmer compared to the OnePlus Pad, which looks cooler. And this is due to the True Tone technology, which Apple says will mimic the natural look of paper. And from what I can see, it does look better with True Tone on the iPad. On the OnePlus Pad, they have this True Tone display Play feature which I have already enabled but even so you can see this is obviously a cooler color temperature compared to this which is warmer and to my eyes more pleasing. The bezels are quite thin and uniform on both tablets. The corners are rounded off. The camera on the OnePlus Pad is here on the landscape uh, side. On the iPad, it's here on the portrait side, and I do prefer to have the camera here because I use my tablet more often in landscape orientation compared to portrait orientation. The display on the OnePlus Pad has a refresh rate up to 144 Hz, and on the iPad Pro, it's up to 120 Hz. On the iPad 9, iPad 10, and the iPad Air, it's 60 Hz. So, on the OnePlus Pad, even though the refresh rate is high, many of the drawing apps actually are not able to take advantage of that high refresh rate. So as I'm drawing this line, you can see the line obviously trying to catch up with the pen tip. On the iPad Pro, this app by the way is Medibank Paint Pro, I can see the latency is much better. There is still a gap as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip, but that gap is smaller. The drawing apps that are available from the Google Play Store that have better latency response are Clip Studio Paint and Concepts. So here I can see the gap between the line and the pen tip is smaller compared to earlier with Minibank Paint.
On the back, the camera on the OnePlus Pad is here and the camera on the iPad is here. That's the keyboard connector for the iPad Pro and the keyboard connector for the OnePlus Pad is there. The power buttons are located here in the same location and the volume buttons located by the side here again in the same location. The OnePlus Pad has four speakers with Dolby Atmos and the audio quality is amazing. It's five out of five stars. The iPad Pro also has four speakers and the audio is equally amazing. But the iPad 9 and the iPad 10 only have two speakers and both are coming out from the bottom where the charging port is so the audio quality is not going to be stereo. The audio sounds good but it's not stereo and it's not going to sound as good compared to these two tablets. The unfortunate thing about the OnePlus Pad is this tablet is only available in one configuration with 128 gigs of storage with no micro SD card slot and this USB-C port here only has USB 2 charging speeds and this tablet cannot output video so you can't even use mirror mode. The iPad 10 from 2022 uses USB-C with USB 2 transfer speeds and that tablet can actually output video. The iPad 9 from 2021 uses lightning port and I'm not sure if that can output Video. And on this side of the tablet, this is used for charging the pen and for pairing with the pen, same like the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro. For the iPad 9, Apple Pencil 1 charges by connecting to the lightning port at the bottom. For the iPad 10, you have to charge and pair Apple Pencil 1 by connecting a cable to the tablet like this. So this is obviously not as elegant compared to being able to charge and pair the Apple Pencil 2 by the side. Another thing you may want to consider is accessories. The iPads have many accessories. If you buy the accessories direct from Apple, those are going to be very expensive, but there are many companies out there making third-party accessories for the iPads. Battery life for the OnePlus Pad is about 10 to 11 hours and for the iPad Pro 11 inch it's about 8 to 10 hours and that's the battery life you can get with other iPads as well plus minus one hour. Time for some line tests. Let's test the initial activation force. This is how thick the brush really is. So the initial activation force of the OnePlus Stylo is very low which means it's easy for me to draw thin lines even when I'm using a really thick brush. So this is very good performance. And this is the iPad and this is how thick the brush really is. Initial activation force of the Apple Pencil is very low, it's minimal, so I can also draw thin lines very easily even with a thick brush selected. To know how sensitive this pen is, this is the test I use. I want to see whether the line can transition from thin to thick and back to being really thin. So this pen is able to do so, which is great because this pen has very low initial activation force and this pen is able to detect the minimal changes with pressure when you're applying minimal pressure. So with pens that advertise high levels of pressure sensitivity but for some reason can't give you the thin lines after drawing the broad strokes, yeah, those pens are not that sensitive in reality. The Apple Pencil is very sensitive as well. Let's look at how the lines taper with the OnePlus pen, the OnePlus stylo, and the lines are able to taper very smoothly, very sharply. This app is Infinity Painter, Android version, and this app has some problems with lines tapering. So you can see the shoelace uh, effect, and I will have to go into settings to increase the smoothness to 10% to get those tapered strokes that I want. 
The problem also happens with the Android version of Sketchbook on this tablet. This is Infinite Painter on the iPad. And there are some issues as well. You can see the little dots at the end of the line for some strange reason. If I increase the smoothness to maybe 10%, I get better performance, but the lines, they don't taper as nicely compared to the Android version. And this is Sketchbook on the iPad. The lines taper better compared to the Android version of Sketchbook, but the lines don't taper as well compared to what you can get with Clip Studio Paint. This is the diagonal line test. I'm trying to draw the diagonal lines as slow and as straight as I can. By the way, my finger is on the display, so there is perfect palm rejection. And these lines are pretty straight. Let's zoom in and have a look. Yep, so these slow diagonal lines are quite straight. I don't see significant or noticeable wobble or jitter and these are the slow diagonal lines on the iPad my fingers and palm is on the tablet so the variance that you see uh, with the line width is due to pressure so I don't see any noticeable wobble or jitter with slow diagonal lines. Let's draw some dots. And this is the iPad. Let's test cursor misalignment. So I'm going to draw some lines and try to join the lines to see if I can join them properly without any gaps and also without the lines overshooting. Now the displays on both OnePlus Pad and uh, iPad Pro are laminated so they will not be affected by parallax. So I can draw and join the lines um, with ease without any gaps, without the lines overshooting. And also the cursor is always directly beneath the pen tip regardless of the angle of the pen so that is great i don't get any cursor misalignment when i move the pen in different when i use the pen in different angles or positions the display on the ipad pro and ipad air are laminated but not on the ipad 9 or the ipad 10 so the displays on the entry level ipads are not laminated anyway on a small display even if the display is not laminated parallax is not really a big issue so here i can join the lines rather easily as well and some of the lines overshoot but that's really due to uh, accident with the apple pencil the line will always appear directly beneath the pen tip as well so there's no cursor misalignment regardless of how you hold the pen next let's look at cursor hovel so this one plus stylo is an active stylus which means when the pen tip is near enough to the display a cursor may appear so this feature may or may not be available depending on the app you use and with Clip Studio Paint on Android, I can see the shape of the cursor uh, changing depending on where I'm pointing the pen. So when you can see the cursor, you will know how much paint you're laying down on the canvas. So this is great for painters, obviously. On the iPad, Cursor Preview or Cursor Hovo is currently only available to the iPad Pros with M2 processor and that's the iPad that I have here 
and for some reason I can't get the cursor shape to change depending on the direction of the pen anyway there is the cursor with this app clip studio I have tried to change the cursor setting in the app but um, it still doesn't work I mean the tilt angle of the cursor doesn't work this app is paint storm on the iPad so I'm changing the angle of the Apple pencil and its direction and I don't see the cursor update to follow the direction however when I lay down the paint I can see the cursor update so now you can see the angle is fixed like this but if I place the paint on the paper or the canvas the cursor will update yeah, so the cursor doesn't update on the fly this is Procreate on the iPad and the cursor seems to be moving randomly anyway whether the cursor can follow the direction of the pen will depend on the drawing app you use and also the settings you choose if you use Clip Studio for drawing you will get a lot of customization for the cursor for the size the shape whether it's a crosshair or a circle or whether you want to see the cursor or not if you are an artist who relies a lot on painting and not so much on line art I would probably recommend you go with the OnePlus pad at this price point because there is the cursor preview so you will get to see how big your brush is before you lay down the paint but on the iPad you can only get the cursor preview if you have the M2 iPad Pro which obviously is significantly more expensive compared to the OnePlus pad but if your art revolves around creating line art if you draw comics then um, you don't really have to worry too much about cursor preview because um, you don't need that cursor to draw line art so this file is going to be saved onto the cloud uh, I'm using the app Medibank paint and this file will be saved to the cloud and later on I will open the same file on the iPad and draw another person on the side just so you can see the side-by-side -side comparison when it comes to the line quality you can get so I've just opened the same file on the iPad using Medibank paint and as you can see this is a pretty good and comfortable size to work on I can have palettes on the left and right side and still get canvas space to a good amount of canvas space to work with so let me just turn off the palette on the side to get even more space the brush that I'm using is Sumi brush so when as I'm drawing this right now I feel um, I feel like the pen performance is not very different compared to the OnePlus stylo the drawing experience is very similar both pens are sensitive and accurate and both pens have consistent and predictable uh, performance so both pens are definitely good enough for creating professional art let me create some very thin lines here and I'm gonna save this and switch over to the OnePlus pad and I'm back on the OnePlus pad so both pens have fantastic drawing performance so both tablets are great at drawing at this $479 price point if you want to get an iPad you will have to get the iPad 9 from 2021 with 256 gigs of storage now for drawing these two are I would say on par but if you want to do more iPad OS is going to give you more for example in addition to drawing apps on the iPad there are also many graphic design apps that can handle vector art, text, layout, 
such as Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, Amadeen and Vectornator and many others. There are no graphic design apps from the Google Play Store that can match the quality and the features of these apps that are featured here. Another thing with iPad OS is you can get direct integration with cloud storage services such as Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox or Adobe Creative Cloud. The default files app on the OnePlus Pad is so basic that it's kind of useless. On the OnePlus Pad, if you want to save your artworks to cloud storage, you can do so from the drawing app. Just go to export and share and you can save it directly to Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive. If you use Krita, you can save your files directly to Google Drive or Dropbox, but for some reason you can't save it directly to Microsoft OneDrive at the time of making this video. All right, to conclude, with the OnePlus Pad, you get awesome hardware, fantastic drawing performance, but the tablet OS is lacking many features. With the iPad, at the same price point, you can only get the iPad 9, or if you stretch your budget slightly, maybe the iPad 10, and the hardware is not as good compared to the OnePlus Pad, but iPad OS offers a lot more software features and integration to the point that I can still recommend the iPad easily over the OnePlus Pad simply because of those software features and iPad OS.